Hi, and welcome to Chelemoji Chats. I'm your host, Liz Lee, otherwise known as Chelemoji, and I'm here to talk about tips and tools to help you on your cello journey. Hello and welcome to episode number 11 of Cello Emoji Chats. And I named this one Back to Practice because around this time of year, uh, if you're listening to this around the time when it's coming out, it's back to school time for a lot of people here. And I am definitely of the camp of well, it's a new school year, so let's uh, kick things off and have a fresh new start. And probably a lot of people uh, took a break over the summer. They may have been traveling. Definitely a lot of my students were like, I did not practice at all. And it's not like it's easy to travel around with a cello, so most likely they left their cello at home. And now they're trying to get back into it. Here in Texas, uh, it's always just a mad scramble just because there's this thing here called all region. And if you are a middle schooler or a high schooler, it is this frantic scramble to get back into practicing so that they're ready for this audition that happens kind of at the beginning of October. And I definitely see a lot of people just get a little stressed out. Parents are definitely stressed out just because they're just trying to get their kids back into the swing of things, into a schedule. They're probably doing a million extracurricular activities. Um, But even if you're not in school, there is something to be said for when the quote unquote fall season comes around. uh, Some people kind of get a revival, sort of like a kick in the pants to try something new and start something new. So I wanted to just chat today about how you can ease back into a practice routine or some routine to get your fingers back into shape. Um, This can be often hard to do, especially if you took a long break and you're just trying to find your groove again. But I think if you try these things, it will definitely help a lot. So First off, step one, you need to gather all your tools and make sure they are ready to go. Now, this may seem like an obvious statement. I mean, obviously, you need your instrument and you need music and all the things. But most likely than not, if you took a break over the summer, these things are probably scattered all over the place or they may have been buried under piles of other things that happened over the summer. I know I've been asking some of my students if they still have their scale sheets and they respond with, oh, that's in my other binder that's at home that they forgot about since May when school went out for them. So it is definitely a little bit of a reminder of like, hey, gather all your materials. So some potential tools could be your music, obviously. Um, Things like what are some good warm-up things you had done in the past? Has it been scales? Has it been finger exercises or etudes? Um, For me, it's definitely getting back into the swing of things of scales. Like it's the easiest way to kind of review a lot of the notes. So definitely I would have scale sheets around. Um, And other basic things like where's your metronome? Where's your tuner? Uh, Do you have enough rosin if you're a string player? Um, How about just a pencil around to mark things with? Um, And also, this is a really great time to check out your instrument maintenance. So a lot of the times, like, we kind of, like, stash our instrument in a corner, hopefully not in direct sunlight and not under a vent anywhere, and... Now it is time to get back into playing and you notice some weird buzzes or some weird rattles or maybe you're checking out your bow and like it won't tighten properly or maybe the strings on your instrument are grossly out of tune or something's broken. This is a really great time to just sort of check in with your instrument and there's a lot of instrument shops that will often just kind of do a check-in with your instrument because Our instruments are held together by glue if you're playing a string instrument. And 
every instrument over time, uh, the seams become open, like the glue basically disappears and you have these holes that create these rattles. Um, and, it, you know, occasionally you just have to take it in and have someone glue it back up so that you can get the best sound out of your instrument. And if you are a parent <laughs> of a kid, you have to also assess, did my child grow? I mean, I've had some kids who were taller than me still playing on an instrument, a cello, that's like meant for people who were shorter than me. So <laughs> it was kind of that point. I was like, you guys are in desperate need of getting a new instrument. And now is a really great time to go to these instrument stores and try out new cellos and check out the cello that is appropriate to your size. Now, a lot of people are like, well, what size instrument should I get? Um, well, I'm 5'4". I will say if you are a cello player above the size of 5'4", you should definitely be playing a full-size cello. <laughs> I'm, it's not like I'm super tall or anything, but uh, definitely playing a smaller cello would be kind of hard. <laughs> so, uh I would say if you are feeling comfortable with a bigger size cello, you can go for it. And if you're still unsure, when you go to these stores, there should be people in there who are qualified to tell you what size instrument should you get. Now, just keep in mind, please do not order instruments off of Amazon.com because they will not tell you what size you need and often... They are of really poor quality. I will say I have had now a couple students who've used Amazon cellos and they have just all have problems and they sound bad. So please just check out your local store. And one of the, the bonuses is they have this uh, rent to own program. So you could like pay all the rental fees. And then when you feel ready to actually purchase something, a lot of them will give you credit towards buying an instrument, which I think it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, any type of discount is always good since, you know, it can get kind of expensive. Okay, so now you have all your tools. You have, you know, any metronomes or tuners. Like if you use a separate one that's not on your phone or maybe you want one for your phone, you can check out a few of them um, and download them to have them ready. You have all your, your pencils and um perhaps like a practice journal, something where you can take notes when you're having lessons or you can actually just record the progress. Um, a lot of times too, it's great to have these journals because you can record the number of repetitions you do of something. Um, this is, it's just nice to have this log. Um, I mean, often with kids, it can be a little bit hard. You can motivate them with, I don't know, stickers, colored pens, all of these things. Um, and I'm definitely working on a fun little practice journal, too. So definitely we'll clue you guys in when that's ready to go. But uh, having this log to keep track of your progress is going to be super important. Um, and yeah, check your other things like, is your rosin good? Uh, is it cracked and broken into a million pieces? Perhaps it's time to get a new one. Uh, how's your rock stop? Do you have a rock stop? Uh, check your instrument. And now let's talk about music. Uh, I am a component of have a wish list of music that you want to learn. Now, this can be for anyone who is a beginner to an advanced player. I think it's always great to have a list of music that you can kind of keep an eye on and be like, OK, I need to pick a new piece. Let me check out my list and see if any of these pieces of music are ready for me to play. And the reason why I say this, too, is so that you will always have that momentum. It's kind of uh, like when I was hearing another podcaster talk about they love to read books. And then once they finish a book, if they don't have another one ready to go within like the next 24 hours, they start to lose momentum. And I feel like that's kind of the same for learning music as well. If there goes this period where there's not something new that you're excited to learn, then most likely than not, you just kind of get stuck in a rut and it can get kind of boring. So I, even for myself, like to keep this list of pieces of music that I know that eventually I'll learn to play or work on. And 
it helps motivate me to learn things and make progress during my practice period. Okay, so then afterwards, you have all of your materials. And if you are taking lessons, hopefully by this point, you have checked in with your teacher. Um, And what I mean by this is, most private teachers, they may have sent out an email saying like, hey, you know, if you are interested in lessons, please sign up for lessons, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, some teachers wait for the students to get back in contact with them. And I always think it's great to be a little bit proactive in trying to get in touch and set up a te- uh, like a lesson schedule because, That way you have probably higher priority of getting the time slot that you want. If you wait for the teacher to contact you, you're kind of probably limited to what a teacher may tell you. Now, every teacher has a different way of how to sign up for lessons. Um, I know mine is like fairly relaxed, but uh, in a way that kind of makes it a little bit chaotic. And I will say firsthand that no teacher will be annoyed if you reach out early and set up um, a lesson schedule and then they no longer have to wonder, is this student coming back or not? So if you have a teacher, please get in touch with them as soon as possible. Um, And trust me, they will definitely thank you profusely (laughs) for being proactive about that. Okay, So I mentioned at the earlier part of this episode that students here, at least in Texas, I'll say for the state of Texas, if they're in middle school or high school, there's this frantic, crazy thing called all region and all state um, auditions that come up in the fall, pretty early fall, in my opinion. And a lot of the times kids either A, don't know when the actual audition is or they don't know when the deadline is and sometimes they rely on their orchestra teachers to tell them or um, or even their own private teachers. I remember when I first had to start teaching here in Texas, it was just kind of this whirlwind of like, what's going on? Because where I grew up, uh, they had their own version of it, but it was it was definitely structured very differently than it is here in Texas. And so I would say check up on your deadlines. Check out, is there anything coming up that you need to prepare for? This could be anywhere from a chair test in orchestra. This could be, oh, I have to go travel for X, Y, and Z for my work. So I want to accomplish this by this date. It doesn't have to be a specific, like I am auditioning for this particular music thing or anything. But I think right now is a great time to take an overview of What are some big events happening in the next few months? And how are you going to structure your life around that? And for parents, this means like, okay, my child now has, you know, all the sports and all the after school activities. But then there's all these like school things like, I don't know, pep rallies, uh, football games to go to or um Things like maybe just check out the school calendar, like where I, I know there's there's some like interesting holidays here, I will say, like, you know, an occasional long weekend that's kind of a random long weekend or um, things like, you know, late next month here, there's going to be Labor Day weekend. So there's all these events and you definitely want to take a good overview of your calendar. Are there any deadlines, any big events that I have to plan for? And definitely mark that in because that will definitely help structure your practice time and not make you kind of freak out of like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time or uh, there's this busy thing coming up I definitely won't have time for. So this will definitely help. Plus, if you are taking lessons, this will also help your teacher to know like, okay, I need to get them ready by this date um, or they're going to be out of town these days. Like all of these advanced planning things are just going to be super, super helpful. And also for you to maintain your momentum and that you don't have to feel like you're just hanging on by a thread, but you're in good anticipation of everything coming up. Okay, now let's get into a couple other things that I think are kind of important uh, to maintain your practice momentum. So first, maybe this 
is possible in your place and maybe not, but I like to say set up a nice practice space. Make it inviting, something where it is easy for you to just sit down and start practicing. Or maybe if you're a violin or viola, you stand up and you practice. Um, And this could be like you set up your stand, your music is on it. Um, It could be something like make it a nice cozy spot and, you know, pleasing to the eye and it just like looks inviting. I don't know. Some people like to put um, a comfortable chair there or they put like a candle, you know, try to create a vibe, like put a happy little plant in the corner there to make it very inviting Um, and Put all of your tools right there in easy reach. So you don't have to scramble around your house to look for things that may be missing or buried or somewhere else, but you're just putting everything in one spot. So all you literally have to do is take out your instrument and start playing. Now, added bonus, I know that when I used to live by myself, I would do this all the time. I would actually just leave my instrument out of the case. Now, I do had the bonus of I didn't have any pets and I didn't have any kids. So just having my instrument out was easy to do and I knew that it was safe and like nothing was going to come crashing down on it. So if you have that luxury of having your instrument nearby and easily accessible, then I would do that. Now, obviously, this also meant like it wasn't sitting in full sunlight. There was no air vents on it. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to look out for the safety of your instrument, but if you have the luxury of having it there, it's going to be even easier for you to like sit down and start practicing right away. Now, if you don't have this luxury of this practice space, I would recommend you still keep everything kind of in one location of your place. This could be just like a corner where your instrument is there and maybe there's just a little basket that has all your tools and your music in there and make that sort of your designated music practice little nook or a little corner there to keep everything there. Um, It seems like such a little thing, but I am finding that I am so unmotivated to do something if I have to scramble all over the place to gather all the things I need just to sit down to play a few notes. But if all I have to do is take out my instrument, I am definitely more likely to do it. And lastly, set a schedule. Now, some people are like, I'm going to set the schedule to practice all these hours every day. And that is just not reasonable. Like if you have not been practicing regularly and then suddenly you are just trying to dive into practicing all the time, that's going to be really, really hard on your body, on your mind, and on your motivation too, to be totally honest, um, dependent on how serious you're taking your instrument practicing. Like, okay, let's, let's be real. If you are a music major, someone who's doing music professionally, then sure, you better be uh, setting aside the practice time you need. But that's not just like a, you know, back to school thing. That's like a life thing. As one conductor mentioned to, to a class that I once took, If you are not doing music every day, then perhaps music is not the profession you should be in. So, but you know, most people are doing music for their own enjoyment, or we all can acknowledge that kids need a break here and there. So when you're easing back into practicing, start small, start and like, you know, take it easy. Start with 15 minutes. I mean, it seems almost too short. Like maybe it takes even 15 minutes to get you all set up to actually practice. But 15 minutes can turn into 20 minutes and then maybe a half an hour. And then after that, it can turn into maybe even an hour of practice, dependent on the the music that you have to practice and try. But I think sometimes people get very ambitious and when they go back to practicing, they're all motivated and gung-ho and they're like, I'm going to practice for the next two hours and get all these things done. And, you know, if that makes you happy that day, sure, you can do that. But you have to make sure you're taking care of yourself, like make sure you do some good warm ups and then make sure afterwards you're doing some good stretches or cool down things so that you don't actually hurt your fingers and your joints or 
Um, if it's kids, oftentimes they're going to need breaks in the middle of a long practice session because they're going to complain like their backs hurt or their arms hurt or their fingers hurt. I mean, if, especially if you have not been practicing regularly, you have to understand that your fingers will not have calluses anymore. I mean, all those hours of swimming or putting your hands under water for whatever reason, um, showers included, <laughs> you are basically washing away your calluses. So your fingers are not as tough as when you were playing regularly. So this is all just to say that when you are getting back to practice, and this could be in any season of life, it could be back to school, it could be the start of the summer vacation and you're like trying to get back into the groove of practicing, you just have to not be too overly ambitious because that is probably the number one thing I hear, myself included, is you get all excited and then like, Maybe even for the first week, you're super gung-ho and you're, you're practicing all the time and then you realize, oh my gosh, I am so tired or things hurt and like why do things feel so tight and stiff? Try to have a practice plan of a warm-up and then you play through things and then maybe perhaps like a fun, enjoyable way to end your practice session. If you're ending your practice session with the most frustrating piece of music or the most challenging piece of thing you ever have tried to play, you are not going to be motivated to go the next day to play music again. Keep it fun for yourself. We all know that practicing in itself can be a bit of a grind. I mean, there are very few people I know who are just like, I love practicing. Um, or maybe their form of practicing doesn't agree with your form of practicing. Um, and they're playing different music or, you know, they have all the time in the world. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. But there is one universal thing is I feel like you should try to end your practice session with something positive, something fun something that motivates you to like come back the next day and try new things and see if that can't be another successful practice session for you. So there it is. Back to practice. Kind of a uh, concise, short, hopefully short way of getting things back into your groove. It's not really rocket science. I'm not trying to say that I have this new innovative way of inspiring you to practice. But perhaps I'm bringing some points to your attention that if you try these things, you can actually have a really good practice session and hopefully maintain a little bit more of a habit of being able to practice. So hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. If so, I would love for you to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Um, and it's super helpful with this interaction because then other people who are interested in the same thing as you will get to see this podcast and it gives more exposure. I really appreciate you guys spending this time with me today and hearing about how you yourself can get back into the practice groove. If you have any questions, you can always check me out on social media at Chellemoji, and I am always happy to answer your questions. Until next time, Chello on. Mm -hmm.